This is problem 103 from OpenStax University of Physics, chapter 10. A uniform rod of length L and mass M is held vertically with one end resting on the floor as shown below. When the rod is released, it rotates around its lower end until it hits the floor. Assuming the lower end of the rod does not slip, what is the linear velocity of the upper end when it hits the floor? Well, what makes something rotate is a torque, and torque is defined as a vector given by the cross product of R and F. This can be understood as RF sine of theta, where theta is the angle between the lever arm R and the force F. Now, at some intermediate point in its trajectory, the rod would be somewhere here. There will be a torque on it generated by the weight which is equal to all of the mass concentrated in the center of mass times gravity. So the center of mass will be more or less at L over 2 and there will be a force W equals mg. Its lever arm is measured from the axis of rotation to where the force is applied. And so theta has to be the angle between those two vectors. And we see that theta is going to be equal to pi over 2 when the rod is standing to 0 when the rod has reached the floor. Because when it's standing, r will be in the vertical direction and the force will be in the negative vertical direction. So they'll be parallel and the angle between them is zero. So actually I did that backwards. This is zero and this is pi over two. Again, that's because when the rod is vertical, R is straight up and F straight down. When the rod is horizontal, R will be horizontal and the force F will be straight down vertically. Okay, so um, now we need to uh, relate torque to some angular acceleration in order to get an angular speed. So we can remember that torque equals to I alpha, where for a rod uh, turning about an axis at its end, we see that we have a formula in uh, figure 10.20 and it tells us that the moment of inertia is ml squared over 3. Is the third formula from the top on the right hand side.
Then I have that torque is equal to m L square over 3 times alpha. I will call that equation 2, and this will be my equation 1. Now I'm going to equate 1 and 2, and from there I'm going to find alpha and try to find omega. The L's and the M's seem like they will cancel. The L's won't cancel completely. I'll still have one of them left. So let's solve for alpha. Now I need to turn this alpha into an angular speed. Uh, you may be tempted to use uh, that your angular speed it would be equal to alpha dt. However, you cannot do this integration with this form of alpha because alpha here is a function of theta and not of time. But let's see how omega varies with theta. And then maybe from there we can find something useful. So how does omega, how does a change in omega, d omega, relate to a change in theta? Well, we could rewrite this as d omega dt times dt d theta, because as you see, the dt would cancel, and so we get what we started with. And looking at that quantity, you recognize that this is alpha, and this is 1 over omega, because as you know, omega equals d theta dt. So let's rewrite this. So that's going to be d omega dt is alpha. And dt over d theta is 1 over omega. OK, so then I have that d omega d theta is equal to alpha times 1 over omega, which, use rearranging, gives me omega d omega equals to alpha d theta, which is great because I can integrate alpha with respect to theta, and that integration will give me an omega. That is, this means that omega d omega has to be equal to the integration of alpha d theta. Okay, so the integration of omega d omega, that's going to be equal to omega. If I put some bounds, omega 0 to omega final, that would be omega square over 2 evaluated between those two boundaries. So let's do, let's do that. And this side would give me um, something. If, for instance, alpha was a constant, then that side would simply give me alpha times d theta evaluated from theta 0 to theta final, which would be alpha theta minus theta 0. And you recognize this equation. This equation is what you already know omega squared minus omega zero squared all multiplied the 2 over equals 2 alpha theta minus theta zero. So if alpha is constant, uh, great, I have a well-known equation. However, for us, alpha is not constant.
so um, we will have to do uh, the integration. Still, the left hand side is just omega d omega, so that's still omega squared minus omega zero squared over two. And the right hand side is just not gonna be um, quite as easy, but it won't be difficult. That will be the integral of alpha d theta. Now I know what alpha is. Alpha is 3g sine theta over 2l. And integrate that with respect to theta. Can take all of this out of the integral since it's constant. And the integral of sine of theta is cosine of theta. And I'll have to in, uh, evaluate that between theta equals to zero, which was the beginning state, to theta equals to pi over two. Um, as you know, uh, cosine of theta is one at pi over two, and cosine of theta equals zero is, well, let me just write it down. This is the graph of cosine. This is theta equal to zero, and this is theta equals to pi over two. So at theta equals to zero, cosine is one. At theta equals to pi over two, the cosine is zero. So then that simply becomes three g over two l. All right, I'll have to make uh, some more room for uh, the rest of the problem. So let's make all of this a little bit smaller. All right, so what we have found is that this quantity omega squared minus omega zero squared divided by two is equal to three g over two l. Well, then that means that omega squared minus omega zero squared is equal to three g over l because the two is canceled. Now, I also know that my initial omega, omega zero, had to be equal to zero because the rod was not moving at that point. It wasn't thrown. It just simply started falling from rest. So, let's simplify this. And I get that omega squared is equal to 3g over L. Uh, then, omega has to be equal to the square root of 3g over l. And finally, um, v equals r omega. So uh, the velocity at some point r, which is now a whole length away, because it's at the tip of the stick, uh, will be this.
and how you choose to simplify that is up to you. You could bring it into the um, radical as L squared. So it could be which will give you then the square root of 3GL. Okay, I hope that helped.